Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to the Jew at Home in the Morning. Feel, feels like we're doing a talk show. I know. Good morning, you two. <laughs> we are now two two weeks out, two weeks in a day. Yeah. And uh, y'all want y'all have been asking for a, kind of a day in the life, really more what we eat in a day. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna show you everything that we eat in a day on a train day. Um, this morning we get up, get a little bit of coffee in, and then we do our normal routine of pictures. That's why we're both in our trunks because that's what we do in the morning. We we do our videos, our pictures. I look at Renee, she looks at me. We see how it's changing. Um, take our pics in the garage. We do did our skin fold caliper sites today. We do our measurements. This is kind of our one of our update days. But it's still every morning this close to the show, we're in trunks and we're looking at how we're looking, how we're changing. We look pretty flat today. <laughs> yeah. So it's like um, definitely mm -hmm. definitely more depleted. It's hitting body weight lows coming down. So part of the process, but. Um, we're at a really good spots, so really happy where we're, we're both at and pretty soon we'll be able to increase food and just kind of feed into the show. But for today, food's going to be pretty low. Um, so we're going to get on with continue our assessments, do some cardio, and then get into meal one. So again guys, thanks for tuning in and look forward to showing you our day. Cheers. All right, y'all. I am... Uh, in between cardio, so I multitask in the morning. Renee and I, we took our progress photos and posed and did all that. So I get done a little quicker than Renee. So between cardio, so I'll do 10 minutes of cardio. At the same time, I'm grilling up some onions, peppers, and jalapenos that I put in our eggs. And I'm also have my bowl of oat protein cake that I make which is uh, it's an oat powder, and then I put some baking soda in it, along with banana protein powder. I use uh, caramel, maple extracts, and some cinnamon, and pumpkin. And so I let I mix that up, I let it sit, then I'll like go back on the treadmill and, and do, do finish out my cardio while it rises a little bit, and, and then come back and microwave it, and then go back and do some cardio. Um, I also have like pre-prepped my, uh, spinach, green beans, and, and egg whites. And so, Renee's doing her cardio. I'm doing some prep and I'm running back and forth between mine and uh, trying to be really time efficient because I, in the morning, sometimes I have some calls and meetings and stuff that I need to do. So, having this stuff cook while I go back and forth between cardio. So, for those extracts, we have a whole basket full, which have been really fun on prep just to add a little bit more flavor. Um, you know, with a lot of these, they do add alcohol to it, um, but it's a pretty small amount. We're talking like in oats, we'll use maybe a quarter teaspoon of these, but some ones that I really like have been like maple and uh, caramel. So you can get them to zoom in for you. Interesting one has been like blueberry to use on like within banana protein powder or even strawberry protein powder. Um, of course, vanilla, some more, like more interesting ones are like a pound cake to do like a lip. You could do um, have a lemon extract, pound cake and blueberry with uh, like vanilla protein powder, like a kind of a blueberry lemon pound cake. And so other people ask me about what pumpkin do you use to mix into your oats? So. I just use like uh, our like a Hill Country Fair, like our kind of generic brand at HEB of canned pumpkin, which <clears throat> for 60 grams of pumpkin, it's five grams of carbohydrate, but you get the one and a half grams of fiber. So it's a good way to like add some food volume to your foods, add some fiber in, which is great for satiety and keeping hunger down on prep. So that's like part of why I've been adding that in, into my oats and I just, I've, I really like it as well too. So the things that we can do macro wise to move some foods around, implement a variety of food sources. So it's not just like egg whites and uh, cream of rice or chicken and rice, just have some like different foods that we enjoy. 
So just so y'all can see, like this is my my oat protein batter, and you see it's like pretty thin when I first mix it, but with the oats in there, it'll thicken up. So I'll mix it, and I'll just let it sit for about five minutes, and it'll have bubbles in it from the the baking powder, um, and it'll thicken, and then I'll microwave it for about three to four minutes and it'll it'll rise up you kind of have to watch it and as that's going I have my my eggs cooking with have spinach green beans the onions and uh, mushrooms in there jalapenos and I use like a McCormick roasted garlic and herb on them just sprinkle it on top and keep them covered and I'll cook the top I don't need to flip it or anything and so while that sits, I'm going to go and jump back and finish off like five minutes of cardio, come back, finish cooking, and then I'll have my, my meal one ready to go. You guys, so Renee's still finishing up her cardio, but for my meals all complete. So we have my 150 grams of egg whites with, it's about 150 grams of veggies all with the green beans, spinach, onions, and mushrooms all together. And with that, what I use is uh, Jihu sugar-free Polynesian sauce. Stuff is excellent. Then also for a little bit of spice. Today I ran out of my Cholula's sweet habanero, so I'm using like a, a just red hot on it. So I'll put that on. You see my my oatmeal protein cake is done. This was uh, 60 grams of oats and 35 grams of animal banana whey, along with 30 grams of canned pumpkin. And to add on to this, I will sprinkle on some cinnamon and I'll also use some stevia packets as well. And I, I know people might give me shit, I, I don't care. I measured out, I do 30 mils of Mrs. Buttersworth sugar-free syrup. And so, and with a little bit, it doesn't take much like five grams of whey mixed into this. So I have like a banana flavored maple syrup that I can add on and I will use some peak Himalayan salt on top as well. So that makes it really, really good. Um, calorie wise, it's about 450 calories, 50 grams of carbohydrates, 50 grams of protein, and pretty much trace fats. I don't have any direct fat sources that I use. So it's about four grams of fat, counting for like what's in the oats. Um, and then drink wise, I'll have just my animal pack powder that I have along with it. And of course, a bunch of supplements that I won't list out because we'll be here all day. <laughs> but uh, that's my meal one. I'll get this down and get to work for a bit for the day. And we'll get two more meals in before we have uh, training today. So he just finished his breakfast and I'm getting started on mine because he added more cardio <clears throat> for me today. So now I'm doing 35 no 40 minutes right yeah 40 minutes total cardio so i just finished my cardio now i'm gonna get started making my breakfast and i'll show you what that looks like all right guys so i'm gonna show you how i make my oat cake if you follow me on instagram i make this a lot and i always get asked how i make it so i'm gonna show you guys how i make it um i have my eggs cooking in my pan right now I do about a hundred grams of veggies um, spinach onion mushroom and then hundred and thirty grams of egg white so I have that cooking now and while that's cooking I'm gonna do my um, oat cake and guys I'm like two weeks out so I feel like my brains on like power save mode so just bear with me all right, so I make our oat flour. You can buy this in the store or it's really easy to make on your own by just putting it in like a blender. We have a Ninja that I just throw it in and make oat flour out of regular quick oats. Um, so I do 20 grams of oat flour. All right, so 20 grams of oat flour. And then I just eyeball my baking powder. But it's about, I don't know, 
maybe half a teaspoon of oat, um, baking powder. Throw that in there. And then for my sweetener, I use um, an erythritol based sweetener. And again, I just eyeball this. It's probably a couple of teaspoons. I make this so often that I have it down to a science. And then cinnamon, again, I don't measure it because you never measure cinnamon with a uh, measuring spoon. You measure it with your heart. That looks about good. And then we add our flavor enhancer, which is pink Himalayan salt. Just a couple turns of that. And then I will add my whey uh, protein powder, which lately I've been on this banana kick because it almost tastes like a banana bread. Uh, this is a really solid uh, banana flavor, the animal whey. It's really good. So I'll do 20 grams of banana whey. And then I'll put some water in here, give it a good stir and put some water in. All right. I'm sorry I'm not giving you guys exact measurements, but this is how I do it. So you're just going to have to mess with it and see what works for you. And then I will do 70 grams of pumpkin. I should probably be doing this with a fork, but I grabbed a spoon. It's okay. Just a little more work. Give that a good mix. And it's going to kind of be like a batter consistency and this will thicken up a little bit. I usually let it sit for about five minutes before sticking it in the microwave. But before I let it sit, I'm going to add some vanilla extract just for a little more flavor. And a little cake batter extract. Give it a mix. So this is kind of the consistency that it looks like. And I'm just gonna let this sit for about five minutes before adding in my blueberries and then sticking it in the microwave. And the kind of pumpkin that we like to use is just a solid pack uh, canned pumpkin. I don't know if you can see that. So we just like to use this solid packed canned pumpkin. Um, a lot of people ask us if we use pumpkin pie mix. Don't use the pumpkin pie mix because that has all kinds of stuff added to it. Just use plain old solid packed pumpkin, nothing added to it. Um, and yeah, that's what we use. So this has been sitting for about five minutes. So I'm gonna add my blueberries to it. I do 70 grams of frozen blueberries. And I just push those down into the batter. And I'm gonna pop this in the microwave for about three minutes. But I'm gonna keep an eye on it because you don't want it to overflow. That is enough to ruin a morning when you have your oatmeal overflow and it's all over the microwave and then you have to start over. I know we've all been there. All right, so this is the finished product. This is what my breakfast looks like. Got my oats here, got my eggs, and I have um, G. Hughes sweet and spicy barbecue sauce and mustard on my eggs. I know it sounds weird, but it's really good. Don't knock it till you try it. 
and then I have my Americano isn't it beautiful I just sweeten it with some uh, stevia otherwise it's just black coffee so I'm gonna go ahead and enjoy this breakfast and I'll see you at my next meal meal two <laughs> uh, meal one is like it's a such process a, yeah, it's such a runaround in the morning yeah. for us which which finally like we kind of get to the same schedule by by meal two so our, our norm is to get some computer work done and then go outside and get some steps in because that's how we do a lot of our prep is best based on keeping our step count up as a means to expend, expend energy so we all have like our our step counter on like I'm trying to hit 9,000 steps a day Renee's at 11,000 and that includes any treadmill walking cardio that we do I, I've had some people ask like how do we implement that or integrate it within prep and coming from an off-season place you should have kind of a standardized amount of activity you're doing and so as you enter into prep you could just increase that just like you would be increasing cardio and it's just an, an easy means to expend more energy and it's like well how do you adjust for it um, you can look at some calorie calculators to get an idea um, of course, as you go through prep, you have some adaptations that occur. You would burn less calories for the same amount of steps. But for in, in general sense, you can, it's more so to make sure you, your activity is not dropping down as you prep. Because that's one of the largest uh, changes and adaptations that we see in people that are dieting. It's not a change in basal metabolic rate as much. But more so, people just get less active and they, they start moving less. And so this is kind of ensures that that doesn't happen and we can progressively increase that too. But in, in general, like a 200 pound person walking a, a mile, which is about 2000 steps, burns roughly about 100, 110 calories for someone like Renee, you know, 130, 140 pounds. You, that, that might be like 70 calories. Oh, that so, sounds really lame. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, you think about it, if you're you're only eating like 1,100 calories today, yeah. 70 calories is, is nearly a, t almost a 10% uh, change. That makes me feel a little bit better. Yeah, you, you have to put that in, in perspective. But but uh, it could be easy to add, add up steps, but also it can be really easy. Like if you took away 200 calories from someone food-wise, but then their step count dropped down like 4,000 steps. They just laid on the couch all day. You wouldn't see them change in, in body weight potentially. You'd be like, well, what happened? I don't know, John. I followed my diet and um, I didn't lose any weight. It's like, well, what about your activity level? Oh, yeah, yeah. I laid on the couch all day. So um, you could add in steps as a way to like, hey, let's drop a little bit of food. Your activity is pretty low. Like you only walk 3,000 steps a day. Let's add in 2,000 steps. That makes them expend maybe roughly about another 100 calories. And you can just adjust it that way. Anyway, <laughs> the long ranting on, on steps. So, so meal two for us. I have 80 grams of mixed veggies. I do spinach and green beans. Um, and then I have three ounces of chicken with some G Hughes Thai chili. Um, sauce on it. Thai chili. And then just a crack of salt. We discovered all the new G. Hughes flavors that they have and they have some carbohydrate in them. I would just weigh them out, you know, to account for them. But again, it, it's stuff that could add up. But if you have enough carbohydrate to spare, it's like a small contribution, right? Like that one is, is what, one gram of carb per 15 mils? Yeah, I believe so. Which you're talking about four calories. So, I mean, as long as you're not dumping it. Yeah, on there. Look, as long as it doesn't look like soup in your bowl. As far as the artificial sweeteners and stuff's concerned, like there, there's no evidence that you're going to have impedance in losing body fat through those. Um, there might be a little bit as, as far as like um, sucralose's effect on, on, on changing the microbiome. But again, it's really, it's not going to impede your weight loss. I'm like, we're both very lean and I'm skinned out, glute striated. I'm still have my artificial sweeteners in. I know that's anecdotal, but still, um, for mine, so a very similar concoction, um, hundred gram veggie mix of spinach and green beans. These are all frozen because we just buy them out of convenience and it makes it prep super easy. Um, I have five ounces of chicken. We made them in the air fryer which has been our go-to all prep. Um, and I, I still use like G. Hughes barbecue sauce and mustard on this one. 
Then my little bit of carb amount that I do for this meal, it's not much. It's about 20 grams of carbs. Um, why only five ounces here is because I add in 10 grams of protein powder to this. So it's uh, about seven grams of actual protein from chocolate, brownie, ba it's brownie batter, animal whey. And then um, 20 grams of oat flour, which is just our oatmeal. That, Ground up in that we throw, our blender. Yeah, we throw in the Ninja and powderize it. So it's oat flour, again, a little bit of, of uh, baking powder, 30 grams of pumpkin, and some sweet and low. Mix all that up and, and microwave it. And then I have 30 grams of rhubarb on there, which rhubarb it's, has a little bit of bitterness to it. I don't usually do it, but for this meal, I, I liked it. I wanted to do it with my chocolate. <laughs> and uh, it, uh, it has a great fiber source as well. So there's only two grams of fiber though for any, look how much rhubarb you get. So like don't cut out fruits and stuff on, on prep. It's, you can get a good amount of volume of them, um, but rhubarb is also really high in fiber. So for every seven grams of carbohydrate, you get three grams of fiber from it. So. A good amount. Well, that's our meal guys. We're gonna dig in and then we'll have one more meal before heading to the gym. Woohoo. Mmm. -mm. Mm. <laughs> no, our food is good. Yeah, it is good. I'm pretty satisfied with my food. It's just the amount that I get. I would like a larger amount, please. <laughs> Coming up after the show. <laughs> yeah, I know more are like this is not a typical thing you see bodybuilders eat, but it's so enjoyable and I. It's still good quality food sources, but I have a, a variety that I can pick from and it helps with satiety. So I think it's okay to have some non-conventional sources. Like if this was just like 70 grams of white rice, man, it would be such a tiny amount and I would eat so fast. I've done preps like that, so. Yeah, it'd be so disappointing. Um, and I think as we're dieting and calories are decreasing, carbohydrates are decreasing, it's so easy to get really limited in, in fiber. And that's when you start having these bowel issues on prep, when you're already having bowel issues just from the GI tract slowing down, transit time. So to make sure like as you're going through prep, you're also increasing fiber to maintain a certain level, which usually it's like 14 grams of fiber per thousand calories is recommended, or for guys it's like 36 grams of fiber, females about 25 grams, 38 grams for males, 25 grams for females, so try to uphold close to that levels and also not have big shifts. So that's one thing people do is eat more veggies on prep and add more in, add more in. They're not free calories, <laughs> uh, but you can have people that get really gassy because they're like fibers alterating throughout prep. All right. All right. Meal three. So pre-workout time, it's 3 p.m. So we'll have this, gather our stuff together and get on to the gym. So this is about probably 45 minutes before the gym when we have this. Um, I'm st I, you'll know from now, I'm totally hooked on protein and oats and uh, I just have a bowl of just 60 grams of oat flour. Again, it's got like 30 grams of pumpkin in it. My baking powder, a um, little bit of stevia in it and 50 grams of whey today for this meal, I'm doing frosted cinnamon bun, and I add some blueberry extract and vanilla extract. And uh, it smells really good. No, no, it smells really good. And I put, I'll cook it in the microwave, but for this one, I um, broil it in the oven, so it like, kind of like gives makes the top a little crispy. Yeah, I know. Getting extra it's extra a process, ex guys. Extravagant here with meals. Um, and I still use a little bit of um, Mrs. Buttersworth syrup with that meal and then some cinnamon and pink salt on top. And uh, I like this pre-workout for one, we'll be at the gym for a while, so it won't be till, it'll be like two and a half hours from this meal to the next meal. So I, I'll, in off season, I like cream of rice because it digests really fast and the volume's more, but I like oats on prep. For one, it keeps hunger at bay. Also the fiber in it kind of gives me a little bit more steady stream of carbohydrate and blood glucose rather than just burning right through it and then I'm immediately hungry again. 
I like, I prefer doing a low fat diet these last weeks of prep versus pulling carbohydrates way down and keeping some fats in. So like one option you could do is have some fats in the meal to slow down digestion. But for resistance training, you're not using a lot of triglyceride for training. It's mainly just carbohydrate based. So that's at least my thought process in that. Then your meal looks really good. <laughs> yeah, I really like this meal. Um, so I kind of do the same thing. I have 30 grams of oat flour, baking powder, some stevia, and then I'll put a scoop of decaf instant coffee in it. And then, I know that sounds kind of weird, but it, it tastes really good. Um, and then 20 grams of brownie batter whey and um, 70 grams of pumpkin, some vanilla extract, what did I use today? Vanilla extract, caramel extract, and cake batter extract. And then I'll put some water in it, 70 grams of pumpkin, and then 70 grams of blueberries and microwave it. Yum, and extra coffee. Coffee, because I'm Say. a coffee addict. And then in this little cup here, I have 15 grams of cookie, cookie, cookies and cream whey. And I just kind of pour it on top of everything and it's just creamy and delicious and sweet. And I love it. Well, I think we have more whey in our meals than, than solid meats. We just like them. But, or we'll have some, a lot of meals that are like half and half. Yeah, for like my post, I'll do like half, half and half. Well, not really half and half, but a little of each. Yeah, which we will see here shortly. But man, and this stuff is just so good. And it's like, you know, we don't have a lot of food, but the food that we do have, <laughs> we're gonna enjoy it. Damn straight we're gonna enjoy it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, damn straight. I've done preps where I thought I had to eat just like, the, the the typical bodybuilding foods like tilapia yes yeah my 2015 gross guys, gross. prep i did tilapia and i would mass cook it and then there would be this like gross ass tilapia jelly mm, you guys know what we're talking about so I'll, I'll never never prep with tilapia again. that stuff is disgusting I'd, i would do i would do cod yeah, I would do mahi. cod too. Cod, cod and mahi are like the better. It's fish. still just like a lighter protein source to eat. I mean, whey is too, but I can mix in my oats. But with fish, like it's low connective tissue and just like digest really fast. So, well, and the but it does thin your skin out. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Like, oh, thin your skin out. That's bullshit. You don't have to eat fish to thin your skin out. Um, That's pretty funny. But I. Uh, I just I have a I have a preference towards chicken. That's just that's what I like. Yeah, chicken's one of those things that I'm not gonna get tired of. And I even I don't even want beef. Like I I would rather do for a fattier source like a turkey or salmon. or salmon. Yeah. I'll go through my phases where I'm like I could do some red meat, but it doesn't last very long. And usually I want like a steak. It's usually not like hamburger. Even even like cheat meals, like we never go get a burger. No. It's not not on the list. Not really. We do a steak, but even the last steak that we had. It was okay. It was okay. And it was at like a... Like a nice... Yeah, where we go? Perry's? Perry's Steakhouse. They had, no, they have a badass pork chop, but the the steak was, com in comparison, was just... It was just okay. Like, yeah. if we didn't get it, I would have been fine. Right. Like... And if we went back, I wouldn't get it. Well, they gave you a chicken breast, you know, fuck that, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Give me more of that pork chop. Yeah. yeah right. And we really underestimated how big that pork chop was. Yeah, yeah, it was massive. But, yeah, we'll get this meal down and start sipping our pre-workouts on the way to the gym. I'll tell you what those are here shortly. <clears throat> we are on our way to the gym and we're sipping on our pre-workout got animal theory and a pump pro two scoops pump pro which is the normal serving yes green apple One is my favorite fury. flavor and watermelon of the fury is my favorite flavor is that what you have yeah no i got 
Is that what I have? I have blue ice and watermelon, I think. Oh, okay. Blue ice is good, too. And a quarter teaspoon of salt added in. And why? Well, you've seen my my nerdy slides on intracellular, extracellular fluids. <laughs> uh, if you bump serum sodium up, you'll also increase water around the cells and in the cells. So if on prep you have a hard time getting pumps, you can kind of super hydrate a little bit by giving yourself a bump of sodium before training. Plus it tastes really good. Yeah, it's because we're so <laughs> salt addicts now. Yeah, I'm it's trying. like I keep wanting my food like sweeter and sweeter and like saltier and saltier. And hotter and hotter. And hotter and hotter. Oh, God. It's old. Oh. It's like you're you're turning into an old person <laughs> yeah. on prep. I'm basically and, an 80 year old. Yeah, because then your face looks like a. Yeah, look ball at her. Look at her faces. They're all smile. Feel it. Smile. You can feel it today. Like really, you just start getting that crinkly like. Like you got a sunburn and you smile mm -hmm. and the skin like cracks and crinkles like that's how it feels when you know you're getting sucked down pulled down more just even by the day which is crazy. I hate the feeling. Just ugh. I like it. It makes me know that I'm like I think getting it, peeled. Well, for you, I think it's okay. For for it just makes you feel ugly. For me, I'm just like oh, I'm disgusting. It's like I shouldn't look this old. It's okay. I'll fill it in with fat in the off season. Great. Cheesecake post show. Yeah, cheesecake. We've been so upset because we wanted, we had a night where we made some cheesecakes and, we're, and we went to the Cheesecake Factory and realized how awesome they are. <laughs> and we had a the Adams Reese's? No. No, the other one. The other one, the Reese's. Just Reese's. Yeah. And it was badass. Oh God, guys, it was so good. And, uh, and it's like when you don't have something like that for so long, then you have it. It's like this like flavor explosion We're in your huge, mouth. We're huge, huge chocolate fans. And peanut course. butter fans. Peanut butter fans. Not chocolate. <laughs> peanut butter. White chocolate. But Chocolate's good too. But we've, we had found, we've been watching these reviews on cheesecake and a lot of them review this white chocolate mac nut cheesecake as being like one of the best ones but they like discontinued it i don't understand it's why like okay that. if it was so good and everybody's giving it 10 out of 10s then why did you get rid of it like couldn't you give something else the boot right but we uh but we'll do the we're, that's the plan post show is we want to go we want some cheesecake so We'll get that Reese's again, but I've also heard the white chocolate raspberry swirl. Truffle. Tr raspberry, raspberry truffle? White chocolate raspberry truffle. Yeah, that one's supposed to be really good, so. Yeah. Cheesecakes. Cheesecakes and sushi. We already have our sushi restaurant picked out. Yeah, we have, we have a plan to not overdo it. We have like the amounts kind of already picked out, so we, uh, we, we can eat some food, enjoy it, but not feel like death the next day, not be able to sleep, and it's, it's a whole mess. So kind of try to plan out the post-show eating yeah. a little bit. Um, yeah, have a plan so you don't go overboard. It depends like what happens after with the show, like with Renee, if she does Tampa, that's a two week turnaround time. <laughs> Although she like, she can pull down really fast though. And then for me, well, I'm, I'm for sure done with qualifier shows. If I have the points, cool, you know. Um, and I, if I qualify the Olympia, uh, I'll, I'll do it, absolutely. But I'm not going to keep doing shows to qualify, so. Yeah, and if I have to do Tampa, that's going to be my last show because I'm not trying to do shows all year long. I do, I do think if, if, I, if I am qualified for Olympia, and you don't happen to qualify, that you should still do the San Antonio show and just keep prepping with me, and then you might be able to qualify for next year. He just wants me to be in prep with him. <laughs> That's the real reason why. No, I'm just joking. Be hungry together. Yeah. Being in prep together is so much better than the opposite. It really is. Like when you were um, in prep and I was in off season and you'd be looking at food videos, I'd be like, I don't want to watch this with you. And now I'm like, hey babe, do you want to watch some food videos? <laughs> Sounds like a great idea. We 
can't sit through a movie though, forget it. My attention span is non-existent right now. There's a new movie that came out on Amazon Prime. That's really good, but it's this will be our third night to try to get through it. It's good. We, it's really good. And like, it, well, we gotta like get up and eat and yeah. walk and do steps, so it's hard to sit there for like two hours straight and not have to Watch get up and do it. something. Yeah. Well, anyway, guys, pre-workout's going down. We're gonna train. And then we will reconvene post-workout with our meals. Alright guys, post-workout, we are done. Renee and I are both like... We're toast. Brains are just non barely functional right now. Brains are mush. Um, my post-workout, I, I, I'm not, I'm doing just, again, veggies. 100 grams of spinach and green beans, six ounces of chicken breast. Have some mustard and some Jehu's barbecue sauce. And how bad is it on prep when you forget your carbs? So I should have 30 grams of carbs in here but I don't, so I'll Aww. probably add that to my next meal um, and do it that way. It, it happens, it happens, so. Yeah, um, thankfully I didn't forget my carbs. I have, um, this is the meal that I'll do some chicken and then I'll do some whey in it. So I have three ounces of chicken, actually I have chicken and turkey in here. Some spinach, G Hughes and some mustard. And then for my carbs, I have um, more of that oatmeal kind of cake that we make. I'm not going to take it out and show it to you. You can see it here. But our, both our training sessions went well. At this point, being like two and a half weeks out, if we can match our load and reps, that's really, really productive and successful. So um, not a lot of pump happening, just glycogen's low. Uh, but still strength is holding pretty well. We've have both reduced our set volume some. Yeah. So to keep keep recovery up, but keep performance high, um, keep effort level high in those sets. But uh, we did what we need to do today and um, go home and get, get two more meals in. Peace out. Oh, hello again. Mm. <laughs> this exhaustion we after our first few meals in training we just go downhill from here <laughs> <laughs> but we made it to the couch so this is where we'll we'll chill for a bit before we have to get back up and get more steps in and um, but anyway this meal it is a favorite meal because we do get to chill and we try to slowly get through the movies that we can't ever finish but what i have here and we both do is a salad which is a fun couch meal for us. So we'll do, um, it's about 200 grams of lettuce. We'll also uh, just do some cooked onions and mushrooms just with some cooking spray and cook those. And then I'll do six ounces of chicken and you have three, three ounces. ounces of chicken. No fats added to this meal. We do both do some mustard and some Jehu's Polynesian sauce and barbecue sauce together mixed in with like a packet of stevia to give it a little extra sweetness. I'll probably have add an English muffin onto this meal since I forgot my carbs for my post-workout meal. <laughs> um, but I, we, I, we heat our salads in the microwave, which is, it's been a thing on prep we've done. I don't yeah, know. it sounds strange, but it's just like a warm salad. I don't know. And it's, I feel like it's been digesting better, just being that it's it's uh, like cooked somewhat and not yeah. all this raw veggie, and the, the volume goes down a little bit with it. But uh, like I said, as we go through prep, we've wanted like hotter things, and so that's what we've been adding in and, and kept this in once we get into peak week though the salads get pulled and we stick to just a a, a little bit smaller vegetable amount because there probably is a total of like 250 grams of veggies in here so we'll drop down to how about back to like a normal like 100 gram amount then of course like show day and stuff like veggies are just pulled completely just to really keep the digestive tract volume down keep that waist tight keep that waist tight vacuum vacuums Belly button to spine. <laughs> oh, all right, so we're going to dig in, guys. I'm going to melt into the couch. <laughs> and we'll uh, get back to you for our last meal of the night. Where's 
my special spoon. So I'm having my last meal, well, we are having our last meal of the night, but he's doing his marathon cooking. <laughs> it's coming, it's coming. It's coming along. Yeah. I have, um, so I make a shake, pretty much a shake, a protein shake, and I put it in this bowl and I freeze it, so it's kind of like an ice cream deal. But it's um, 25 grams of brownie batter whey, um, cashew milk, ice, stevia, and then I do, um, a scoop. Of a my bowl was burning my fucking hands. <laughs> it's like, you were keeping it cool there I, for I was a while. Like, I'll talk real quick. No, no, fuck. <laughs> Anyways, a uh, scoop of decaf, uh, instant coffee, and then I blend it up and then freeze it for a couple hours. So this is my last meal of the night that I'll have. Just pulled fats out of that meal for her. Um, mine, I'll grab it while it quickly so it doesn't burn my hands, is another bowl of oatmeal. Our cats are totally crying behind this, <laughs> so if you heard that. Um, yeah, so I, I do, I'm doing 60 grams of oats. Um, I have 40 grams of frosted cinnamon bun whey in it, a little bit of pumpkin again, and uh, then just some sweeteners added to it and a little bit of car caramel extract. Uh, I usually do something similar to her, but tonight I'm doing 150 grams of egg whites and a little bit of veggies with it. So just moving stuff around. I didn't feel like eating a shake because it takes me a while along with that meal too. So, so I have a lot of carbs right before bed and what I do find on prep and even in the, in the literature you look at, like the thing that aids sleep the most is actually carbohydrate. And it likely has to do, especially on prep, but cortisol is elevated when you're sleeping. And that, and especially if you're getting low glycogen at night, that causes you to be more alert, more awake. And so you don't go into that rested state. So cortisol's up, it's telling you, hey, wake up, stupid, go eat, eat, go eat food. You're, mm -hmm. you're in prep and you're, you're starving. starving. Starving, right? Um, so having that at night definitely helps with hunger, keeping cortisol lower, and just sleep better. So I have some, some uh, more carbs at night. Um, but that is our day. So for me, that came out to about 200 grams of carbs, 270 grams of protein, and just trace fats. So y'all saw, I don't add any direct fat. So it's maybe maybe 15 grams of fat. And then on, I also have my supplements that I take too for my mega threes. And then you just got pulled down. So she's right at 1150 calories, which is the lowest that she gets to. Again, it's just this last this last two weeks, normally she's been at 1400. So just a, a quick pull down, which um, if I remember right, it's like 150 grams of protein. I think we're at 25 grams of fat and then 110 grams of carbs, I think. Yeah, I think that's that what it sounds was. right. I, I just changed it last night, so I have to look again. But that's our meals for the day, guys. Um, Y'all wanted to see it, so we shot it for you. Uh, let us know any <laughs> questions that you have below. Uh, hopefully we were like a brain functioned enough today to, to like yeah. articulate enough of this diet stuff for you guys. But anyway, appreciate the likes, the comments, subscribe, and we will talk to you next week for being one week ish out. <laughs> Exciting.